All right, first of all, let me thank everyone for coming today. We wanted to just give a um, update from um, all the uh, different county agencies over the damage, the recovery efforts from the storm last week. But as you know, we've had uh, a cold front came through last week and then, and then had a, um, and now have another uh, winter storm warning in effect uh, starting today at 11 o'clock. So just briefly, uh, we're gonna bring up uh, Pike County Sheriff Rodney Scott here in just a minute and some other county officials. So far the damage assessments that are still underway from the storm on Saturday indicates 12 homes were completely destroyed, 20 had major damage, 28 had minor damage, and 110 homes were impacted. Uh, we have Roy Sawyers here from Mount Water that will be able to give an update. Most of the communities that were impacted uh, with, with water loss are back on. Uh, we do have a statement from um, Kentucky Power, uh, which I'm gonna go ahead and read. Uh, the recent flooding had had an impact on our system with scattered outage, but accessibility was the major issue. So as soon as the water receded, we were able to restore all customers that could accept service. Kentucky Power has been watching the incoming snowstorm for several days, making preparations for the possibility of outages and are prepared for the upcoming potential event. As always, we will shift our internal resources within the territory to where they are needed first. We have contacted our local contractors to be ready to react and have had conversations with our mutual partners if more help is needed. As Kentucky Power prepares, we encourage our customers to prepare as well by having flashlights near, fully charged cell phones, and emergency plans for your homes. Customers can always contact us via social media, our webpage, KentuckyPower.com, or through Air Solutions Center at uh, 1-888-572-1113. And just to give you the latest update from the National Weather Service, a uh, winter storm warning remains in effect from 11 a.m. this morning to 10 p.m. this evening. Uh, unfortunately, we are expecting a wet, heavy snow with total accumulations of four to eight inches with locally higher amounts possible. Uh, and uh, there could be some heavier bands even within that. Uh, this is affecting most of East Central and South Central Kentucky. And it is it advised that travel uh, will become very difficult and hazardous conditions will impact the Thursday evening commute. Uh, the predictions that Pike County Emergency Management have provided to me uh, is that there's a 99% chance of uh, receiving approximately five inches of snow and 88% chance of eight inches of snow. So this is a significant snowfall event. Uh, and as we, as you can see from the statistics on the damage assessments, we have a lot of folks who are in the recovery mode trying to clean up flood mud and the uh, cold weather we had on Sunday and Monday not only hampered that, uh, but this is going to make it extremely difficult. So at this time, I want to ask uh, Pike County Sheriff Rodney Scott to come up and address some issues that we have uh, with looting and also to discuss uh, roadway safety over the uh, next couple of days. Sheriff. Thank you, Judge. Um, first thing first, uh, the looting over at Toller. Um, Judge mentioned it to me, what, Tuesday, I believe it was. Anyway, I talked to one of the troopers uh, yesterday, and they do have some suspects in mind. Uh, they're just waiting to gather some, some more evidence on that. So uh, there should be a rest here in a few days on that. Uh, second of all, uh, the snowstorm, uh, please stay off the roads. Uh, if, you, if you need anything, uh, I'll have officers out all day tomorrow. Uh, call our office. 432-6260, and if you need any assistance of any kind. Um, our tax office will be closed today at 12 o'clock due to the passing of a longtime deputy. And if you plan on paying your taxes tomorrow, depends on the weather, you, you probably should call before you come. Um, Judge, that's about all I have. It has been, and Sheriff didn't mention this, the practice that if, uh, if this uh, snowfall event impacts traffic for the next couple of days, 
uh, someone's out of medicine or has a problem with these food, those kind of things, the Sheriff's Office has been fantastic about making sure uh, that, uh, that those folks get what they need. If they'll again call the Sheriff's Office at 432-6260. Uh, at this time, um, I would like to ask uh, District 1 Commissioner Ronnie Robertson to come up, just give a brief summary of the damage in his district. District 1 and District uh, 2 were the least uh, damaged. District 2 really had no damage. Uh, District 1 uh, did have some damage from the flood event. And Commissioner Robertson can just briefly summarize that, uh, talk about where they are in terms of the recovery efforts in District 1. Commissioner. Thank you, Judge. Um, my District 1 was not hit as hard as the Belfry area was, but we did have quite a bit of road damage and, and water damage. Um, we are working on that as quick as we can. I just ask the citizens to be patient. This is the second big storm that we've had in the you know, last little bit. So now we're gonna have this snowstorm come. Just try to urge everybody to, to get what they need early today, get home, stay off the roads, and uh, be safe. Thank you. Commissioner Jason Tackett, District 2. Thank you, Judge. Uh, I, Saturday morning, uh, I got up and noticed that we hadn't had much damage in the uh, District 2 area, and I spoke with Commissioner Booth and Commissioner uh, Robinson, and uh, they said they'd been hit pretty bad, so I went to the hand and started driving roads for those guys, uh, reporting uh, damages to the uh, road department. Uh, I said we got a snowstorm coming and I think we're all in, it's gonna hit us all. So just get like Commissioner Ronnie said, just get your stuff, get it early and get in, get ready for it. All right, uh, Saturday morning, uh, Commissioner uh, Brian Booth called me and advised me of the damage. Uh, Commissioner Booth's district was the most severely hit. We had damage uh, throughout his district and most of the homes that were destroyed and the structures that were impacted were in his district. So Commissioner Booth, come on up, please. Yeah, our district, District 3 was uh, hit really hard. Uh, a lot of homes flooded in the Belfry and the Big Creek area, including the Big Creek Fire Department. We've had numerous drains washed out. Uh, I think we've pretty well got most people passable to where they can get in and out. It's gonna take a while to recover. Uh, we got a lot of shoulder and do back and, and a lot more of uh, probably uh, breaks and different things. We had numerous breaks and all. So people just need to be really patient with us. We're kind of, uh, if the snow does come in, we have numerous trees down. If it is a heavy, wet snow, it's even going to hinder us that much more. So I just ask for your patience and we'll try to get the roads back up and just as fast as we can. That's all I have. At this time, I would like to ask uh, two gentlemen to come up that the county owes a tremendous debt of gratitude to. First is Pike County Emergency Management Director Doug Tackett uh, and Deputy Emergency Management Director Nee Jackson. Uh, Doug is uh, retiring on uh, January 31st and to, to say that he's going out with uh, some very difficult circumstances uh, would be an understatement. Uh, Mr. Jackson, who will be the incoming Emergency Management Director is also the Fire Chief at the Belfry Fire Department and participated in over 40 water rescues uh, on Saturday. So these gentlemen both deserve a uh, significant um, uh, recognition by the people of the county. They also spent two weeks in Western Kentucky helping with the storm recovery efforts down there. So uh, Doug, Nee, come on up and you can give us an update on the weather and on where we are in terms of qualifying for both government assistance and individual assistance as a result of the uh, disaster declaration. Oh, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, well, to start with, recovery efforts are underway and damage assessment is ongoing and will probably remain ongoing for a few more days pending the outcome of the storm. Uh, if you haven't reported your damage to us and we haven't been out to find it, please give us a call at our office, 606-432-0210. Uh, 
and uh, we'll get someone out to your property to uh, evaluate your damages and, and get you included in our damage assessment. Uh, with this storm coming, um, please be aware of the weather. If you haven't already gone out and got your supplies that you need and get your, your family ready, you need to do that today before very much longer. It's going to start to come this way now. It was east of, or just west of I-75 before the press conference started. And it's uh, moving fairly quick, so it's going to be here before we know it. Um, again, if you have damage to your home that you haven't reported to us, please give us a call at the office. Another thing we would encourage you to do so you can get we updated weather information and warnings is to sign up for our RAVE uh, mass notification system. You can do that by going to smart911.com and registering there, or there's a tab on our uh, Pike County Emergency Management Facebook page that you can hit there. It says use the app, hit that button, it'll take you to the same spot to register as well. And uh, we'll be watching the weather throughout the day and night. We'll have the EOC staff for a little, uh, minimally staff this evening and call in additional staff as needed. But we are watching the weather. We're going to keep sending out updates as we get them and uh, try to keep everybody aware of what's going on. Thank you. Um, as Doug uh, mentioned, uh, the upcoming weather, uh, if we do get uh, weather in the nature of eight inches of snow, they're also long-term looking at uh, the possibility on Sunday um, of having temperatures reach about 52 degrees after we have a really uh, hard freeze on Friday. And there's also a 100% chance of rain. So uh, we possibly could be looking at, with the saturation in the ground, uh, of having a, p a potential another flooding event. So um, that's something for people to keep in mind. Um, even if we get snow, and we get that type of mount, uh, if we get those warm temperatures on Sunday with that much rain, uh, there is a major potential for, um, potential for flooding again. So uh, just keep that in consideration as well uh, as, as you're going through the next few days ahead. If you're heating, please make sure that uh, space heaters are used in moderation. Um, they need to stay within five to 10 foot from the walls. Uh, don't overload heaters. Make sure that they're on uh, good surge protectors uh, because especially homes that have had damage with flooding, uh, you need to have the wiring checked out before you go putting a lot of load on, on that uh, electrical system. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Fabian Little, Pike County Road Department Supervisor, to give us a summary of where we are on the repairs for our county roads that were damaged. Okay, first I would like to say that uh, we are aware of the burden that the flooding has put on everyone affected in just uh, going to the pharmacy for medication, the grocery store, and also uh, even the hindrance of emergency services such as fire and rescue. Uh, to date, and this number keeps going up daily, there are 103 county roads affected by the flood with approximately 107 miles. Uh, all routine maintenance for the county roads have been suspended until further uh, notice until the flood damage is complete. Uh, available crews have been dispatched to the affected areas. The, the first priority for us is to assess all damage. Second priority would be to uh, open all county roads. And then the types of damage that we're seeing are uh, drain damage such as uh, collapsed drains or stopped up drains, broke breaks in roadways, down trees blocking county roads, mud slides in the creek and roads, and damage to our county bridges. And then uh, after all county roads are passable and uh, damage assessed, we will then begin doing the uh, permanent work of repairing these county roads. Oh yeah, and then also <laughs> with the uh, upcoming snow, that is gonna hinder us in the, the way that we can work on these county roads because we would have to stop our work on the county roads to just uh, clear the roadways of the snow and ice. 
Uh, just a, just one thing that that, we, that uh, Mr. Little brought up. We had over 120 work orders that have been submitted related to storm damage as of uh, Tuesday evening. That's not 120 different. That's 120 different uh, roads that were impacted uh, by the uh, by the storm. The repairs are not going to be something that's quick. This this is the third disaster declaration for flooding. Uh, that I've signed in the last 10 months. Uh, the storm in February of last year did qualify for public assistance. And public assistance is when FEMA will step in and help government entities and utilities cover the cost of the repairs. Uh, the storm in September did not qualify either for public assistance, nor did it qualify for individual assistance for the homeowners that were impacted. Uh, those damages were paid out of the county's budget. Unfortunately, we were in a financial position to absorb those, but it was several hundred thousand dollars, if not more, in damages in September. Some of those repairs were just completed last week, and those areas have now been damaged again. We have roads that were recently paved, numerous roads that we recently paved, new asphalt. Uh, much of that's been washed away. Uh, particularly over in uh, some areas in Commissioner Roberts' district and Commissioner Booth's district. So we ask the public to be patient with us because the first priority is to get the roads open, as Mr. Little said, and to take care of the major repairs first. We have embankment failures throughout the affected area. We have drains and culverts washed out. We have drain tiles that have been washed out. Uh, yesterday I was contacted by a local health care provider uh, regarding an elderly gentleman who is on dialysis who is now trapped in his home because his, uh, his drain tile and bridge is completely washed away. Uh, we are looking for assistance to help that gentleman uh, with that. I reached out to one of the local churches and um, asked actually uh, my pastor at First Baptist to uh, uh, work to see if we can find some assistance through either uh, some of our church members or through the uh, ministerial association. So there's a lot of people uh, who have been impacted. A lot of those folks do not have flood insurance. And unfortunately, a lot of the people who were impacted do not have the financial means to, uh, to, uh, to recover from this. And it's gonna be important for us to work together to try to help them. But I would point out that we're very limited in what we can do as a government body because under most all circumstances, we are precluded by law from working on private property. So uh, at this time, I'd like to ask um, uh, Mr. Chuck Morley, is Chuck gonna come up or is it gonna be Judge Hickman? I've got Mr. Chuck Morley, who is the solid waste manager, uh, to come up and discuss the plans for Pike County solid waste uh, over the next couple of days. Chuck, come on up. Thank you, Judge. First, I'd like to say, uh, with the upcoming weather we're expected to get, if we, in, if we do indeed get that kind of weather, we will not be running garbage trucks tomorrow. It is not only a, a danger to the men out trying to pick up the garbage, but it's also a public, to the public also, because if we're stopped in the roads picking up garbage, I mean, it just, you take a chance on sliding into the trucks. It, it, it's really not worth getting out there and putting everybody in danger. So we will shut down tomorrow if we get the weather they're predicting. And to the folks out there that got flooded, uh, we're gonna help you get that, those things cleaned up. What we need you to do is separate everything out. Uh, your regular garbage in one pile, furniture in one pile, and construction debris and such like carpet in another pile. So we can assess what we need to do to get it picked up and cleaned up. We'll be picking some of it up with the garbage trucks as we run the runs, and some we'll be sending out the knuckle boom truck to get. And we need you to call the office and get on the list if you have those type things. The number's 432-6245, and we'll get you on the list, and we'll work to get everybody cleaned up. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Um, I want to mention uh, that we do have water and other cleanup supplies located at the Belfry Volunteer Fire Department. A lot of that uh, material was donated by the Churches of Christ, and we certainly want to thank that organization uh, and their uh, member churches for assisting. Uh, we have had uh, disaster assessment teams here from the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, the American Red Cross, and we want to thank everyone who's reached out to help. But if you need cleaning supplies, you need water, um, 
There are supplies at the uh, no charge at the Belfry Volunteer Fire Department. If you have a, and also at Big Creek Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, we want to also just mention that the uh, Big Creek Volunteer Fire Department and Chief Rick Green, uh, they received substantial damage. Uh, that station was flooded for the fourth time in about 20 years. Mr. Jackson and I were there in 2009. It was flooded, I think, last year. Uh, and now this is the third time that I recall since I've been in public office. We are going to work to locate to get a hazard mitigation grant to relocate that fire department and the Blackberry Fire Department's main station up out of the floodplain. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we had numerous water rescues. And in 2009, uh, Mr. Jackson and I were there, and uh, members of the Big Creek Fire Department engaged in several swift water rescues, saved a couple of lives clearly at that time. And we need to make sure that the uh, fire department and its resources are not at a risk for a flash flood. Uh, some of their equipment, their turnout gear, and their uh, two or three of their vehicles were damaged. So it's a, this is a big issue, and it's something that we're going to try to address as we move forward. Uh, at this time, uh, I would like to ask uh, Roy Sawyers from Mountain Water District to come up uh, and give us an update on the water restoration efforts. I do want to just say before Roy comes up, that not only do our Pike County Road Department employees and our emergency management employees, our first responders deserve a big thanks, but it's not often that we get an opportunity to thank the employees at Mountain Water District. Uh, their employees have worked essentially around the clock since Saturday. And a lot of people have been, you know, have, have been upset over the length of the outages, but the damage that the Water District suffered in some areas was just tremendous. Uh, I think over in the AFLEX area, uh, there was just a lot of line that was just completely taken out. Roy can talk about that. Um, and it's, it was a very complicated process, but most of the water is back on. There are some areas still under boil water advisory, and Roy can explain that as it comes up. Roy. Uh, on our website, you'll be able to find uh, the boil water advisories uh, and the current conditions. The district is sampling right now to release some of these areas. Um, we do have water restoration to all our service area now. We are working on uh, work orders, uh, individual work orders and exposed lines. Uh, <clears throat> as the crews are, are move along, we'll uh, have those in place. Uh, one of the things the district does do to prepare for this weather that's coming up is we try to make sure that we put more storage into our water storage tanks and, uh, uh, and work on our generators to make sure they're all fueled up and all running well uh, to be prepared for this storm. Uh, as of right now, like I said, the, the restoration of the service areas does have water. If any individual has any issue at all, like I said, we're working on work orders, but they may call the district. If they have a problem, call in there. If you have a problem at night, you can reach the water treatment plant at 606-754-4218. And as of right now, we appreciate the, the uh, uh, thanks and the gratitude of the uh, fiscal court for our staff working around the clock. We do work around the clock. Uh, our guys take great pride in, in serving our community. And uh, uh, we appreciate y'all. Um, I want to uh, just mention that uh, when I was over in uh, the Belfry and Big Creek area on Monday, the crews were out and it was sub-freezing temperatures. And uh, obviously, Roy, the uh, weather was not uh, easy to work in for your crews, but again, express our appreciation. Uh, I do want to uh, ask uh, Pike County Jailer Brian uh, Morris to come up. Brian um, had numerous inmate work details out working to help clean up uh, public facilities uh, and I just want Brian to come up and uh, he can explain some of the work that the jail um, staff, along with some of the inmates, did on uh, Saturday and Sunday. Brian. Thank you, Judge. First, I'd like to uh, send my thoughts and prayers to all the people that's had uh, flood damage over the past week. Uh, uh, judge's office reached out to me and asked me to get the inmates uh, out to areas that they could provide services. Uh, we went out to the Belfry area. We worked at the courthouse and the Senior Citizen Center. Worked with Rick Green over at Big Creek Fire Department and helped them clean up. Uh, we've sent inmates out 
to uh, all the areas that the Department of Corrections will allow the inmates to go out and perform work. Uh, uh, it's a service that the jail offers that I think is an outstanding service to, to the community. Uh, wish we could uh, do more in, in other areas, but, but just uh, not allowed. Uh, just uh, once again, like to uh, my sympathies to the people that was affected and for everyone to be safe during this snowstorm that's coming in and God bless. Uh, Pike County Attorney Kevin Keene was supposed to be here today. Uh, Kevin's under the weather a little bit, um, but both our county attorney and Commonwealth attorney have uh, expressed that anyone that's caught uh, looting or stealing from any of the affected uh, property owners uh, who have been harmed by this will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. It's something that's not going to be tolerated. Uh, it's not something that we uh, expect of our residents here in Pike County. And uh, if you do have any problems with flooding, uh, you can contact Sheriff Scott's office, the Kentucky State Police, or uh, Mr. King's office, or Mr. Sloan's office, and I'm sure that they'll take the appropriate steps. So um, if um, anyone has any questions uh, for myself or any of the folks who've spoken up here, we'll be happy to entertain those questions. Yes, sir. Open up shelters if, if we lose power. Uh, that's something that we will have to do, uh, but we have to see what areas are impacted. Um, we can do that fairly quickly. Uh, that's why the emergency operations center will be open tonight. Uh, in the past, we have had warming shelters, but it's very difficult to pre-plan those. Uh, we have access to. We have talked to the school system. Uh, we have access to our community buildings and senior citizens buildings. We have the courthouse here, we have the courthouse at Belfry. So uh, we have op options there. Uh, but it's sort of hard to pre-plan those because we don't know what areas might be impacted by power outages. Anything else? All right, if there's no other questions, that will conclude the press conference. We appreciate everyone coming. Thank you all.